Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be covering the irrigation setup that I have in the new greenhouse. Now it all starts up there at my shop and I got a running shed and I got a water line, three quarter inch poly, uh, about 130 feet buried down to this corner of the, of the other greenhouse and I have it come up and it tees off and I have a valve there where I can hook a hose up for in here or anything future that I want to put in here. And the black poly three quarter inch goes all the way down all the way down here it ties in right below my water canteen there i got a valve there three quarter inch poly with just a garden on off um, valve that i can use to fill up buckets or or whatever down there and then i have an auxiliary out the back which you probably can't see used to flush out the line in the springtime drain it in the winter and i'll also be putting a valve there so i can use it to water the hops or anything else along this side of the greenhouse <clears throat> now off the three quarter inch poly, I got a T fitting, three quarter inch black pipe uh, buried. It comes into a three quarter inch mainline PVC. This is the overview, <coughs> excuse me, of what my little irrigation area, other than the beds, I'll get into in a minute. So, it might be easier if I stand over here. So, basically, it comes up here, three quarter inch line, and I was debating how to do this setup. Actually, I'm going to stand on this side. <laughs> Easier for me to talk. Debating on how I wanted to do this setup. I originally was just going to have one uh, one shut off going into my timer and then into the into the ground, and that tees off onto my bed, which I'll explain in a second. <clears throat> but I was debating if I want how I wanted to do it. If I wanted to have some kind of bypass, just do it with that. Case, because if I want to flush out my lines, I don't want to be flushing it out um, through my timer and through my pressure regulator. Because if there's garbage in the line from who knows what over the winter, whatever, I don't want to be pushing that through this, possibly damage it. Um, I mean, this is a uh, you know durable hard plastic. I'm sure the insides are probably metal, but I, I wouldn't. I don't want to be pushing that stuff through there, especially into my reducer, which is all plastic. I don't want to be messing with that. So I ended up. You can see here. It's like a like a big rectangle but it all flows one way it doesn't flow the other way <clears throat> now i guess if i have this valve open and this valve it could kind of flow up like this but with the pressure coming out of here it's not going to do that so anyway this comes off elbow three quarter inch this is all three quarter inch pipe at this moment uh schedule 40 pvc now it comes into my first shut off turn this this is obviously horizontal um, is off and vertically or parallel to your pipe it is on so it comes into that goes into my timer this is just um, the name is Melnor I think that's the brand <clears throat> I got it out of uh, from a local place up here and it basically has settings from anywhere between 15 minutes and 120 minutes which is two hours it also has a manual manual setting so basically it's, it's mechanical it's not electronic there's no power there's no anything it's, it's worked just like uh like a wind-up watch type thing so you basically set it to what you want if you hear it clicking and it starts to turn down if you want to just turn it on manually you pop it over to the manual side and then you click it back and then the water flows out of that through my 10 i think this is either 10 or 15 psi um regulator and i'll show you how that works in a second so that comes down into here tees off goes into the ground now from the, i'll go back to this in one moment from the ground it goes off into half inch pvc pipe tees over to this bed tees this bed that bed and then this here is i'm also calling it an auxiliary to blow out the line or if i want to fill a bucket or hook something here or whatever uh, i wanted to put one there to have the option i might even run some type of mist system up at the top and that one would be great for that because it already has a valve run the pipe up but anyway, it costs an extra, you know, three or four, maybe say six bucks to put that in. Well worth it. So anyway, it comes into each bed. is individually controlled. has its own ball valve so I can shut it off, reduce, or advance the pressure any way I like it. And these are just simple, just simple ball valves. Kind of clockwise open, clockwise locks it. Same as a three-quarter inch. And attached to that, <clears throat> excuse me, is half inch, no, this is half inch poly goes the length of the of the beds here and um, I have a bunch of 
product order with my drippers and how to do how to punch holes in this i'll be showing that in a later video but that's basically where my drip emitters and my my poly line or my little quarter inch pipe will be coming off of going to tomatoes cucumbers peppers whatever i plan here each one's going to have its own emitter which i'll cover in a later video so back to this that was pretty straightforward <clears throat> back to this now if for some reason i don't want to use the timer or if I want to just water things, dial it in myself, I can use this valve. And this valve here, this has the full pressure. It bypasses everything. Now, word of caution with doing this, as you've probably heard and see, this um, reducer or the this uh, pressure reducer has a little hole here. Now, I believe that's used either for backflow prevention or it's used... Um, in case the pressure like because i'm on a well it's not constant it kind of fluctuates it might be there just for that so a word of warning if you do do that and you bypass this without having anything open mind you you will have water coming out of this little hole but don't worry it's just uh it's just prevention for the uh for the reducer so i'm just going to turn it off so that it stops dripping so anyway and then this basically continues down into here same difference if i want to just do it manually or if this is for some reason, if this isn't putting out the pressure I need, I can always reconfigure this to get rid of the pressure reducer. And then I can control the pressure with these valves. That's why I have valves everywhere. Um, you know, they're not the cheapest things. I think a three quarter inch valve was maybe four or five dollars up here, maybe six half inch valves are maybe three fifty. But I think it's going to save a lot of headaches. So I have that amount of adjustability. <clears throat> so that's basically the greenhouse irrigation setup. This is kind of the nerve center of it. I can always swap this out for an electronic, electron, uh, electronic timer if I want, or you know, get rid of it all together. That's why I can I can shut that line off without having to redo the plumbing. So my funnest feature, if you will, goes over here. You say, well, what does this go to? Well, as always, I have fresh valves or you know, new valves and any type of splitter. Well, I had you see here, the kitchen sink. <laughs> now uh, we're at the east end here. This space was not designated for this sink. Uh, I remembered I have this. actually came out of my parents' house about two or so years ago. I had it up in my barn for that amount of time in a bag, and I totally forgot about it. I said, you know what? I was originally going to put it in the other greenhouse, but it really didn't fit the way I had it set up. Plus, I had I didn't want to be running hoses to it. I, it's just kind of silly to do that. Um, and again, all this stuff is used just during you know warmer months. In the wintertime, the lines will be blown out and opened up and everything. But, so I had to get a couple fittings to kind of tie everything in there. You kind of see it down there, kind of rigged up into T's and uh, the flex hose that comes with the sink. But anyway, I figured, you know what, this is going to be a great double basin sink that I can use to wash my hands, get some soap here. But, uh, yeah, there you go. And then this pit is just going to be filled with gravel. Uh, I've, been, I've been using this a while already, and the, the, the water has drained just fine. And, uh, you know, both sides are work here i even have one of those plugs that yeah well that one doesn't work i have to figure out how to do that one of those plugs you get the idea that uh, stops up the water in case i ever want to i don't know do something like that but in any case that's uh the thing of course it's just cold water only but for being out here in the summer and the spring that's all i need so i'll stand back this way i don't know what other greenhouses that are kind of hobby commercial or hobby kind of market gardens uh, have a working sink <laughs> uh, I think it's pretty cool and I know it's gonna help out when I'm done for the day or from switching between seeds wash my hands off have a towel or something hanging there and then there you go ready for the next thing so this is again we're looking at the east wall here east is straight that way this is what the setup looks like with the shutoff valves the kitchen sink the auxiliary valves the bed valves the timer reducer the whole deal so anyway, part two of this will be coming up where I'm going to undo an unboxing and show you how to set up um, drip emitters with drip line and how you can transfer that into using drip tape, uh, which won't be used in this greenhouse, but I'll still show you kind of how that goes. Thanks for watching.